passive income Gold in my dental, thank God for my mental Invest in fundamentals, told my girl it was simple we Hey, what's good, y'all? It's C. Will, and this is the Passive Income Network. On this podcast, we talk about creating assets that produce passive income. All right, y'all, we have a special podcast feature in the studio. As you see, we got Clifford here, the founder of Alcumon. Hey, what's good? How's it going? I'm doing uh, well. Excellent. Always a pleasure to have you back. Uh, maybe this is the third, fourth time, so I'm happy that we get to keep getting updated on this great project that you're building. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's great to be here. Okay. We got a nice agenda today that yep. we want to get through, and I know the audience is always excited. So let's start with it. Um, again, for the people who don't know what Alcumon is, you want to introduce yourself yeah. and uh, let the newcomers know what Alcumon is. Yeah, so Alcumon, it's a play-to-earn game on the Algorand blockchain. Uh, basically, it's NFT-based, so you get some NFTs, you get rewarded for holding the NFTs, and then you can use them in the video game to earn uh, even more tokens and more rewards. Uh, we're building out to be a whole ecosystem with art pieces, uh, special attacks, all kinds of things like that. Excellent. You know, I got one of those uh, special attacks as well that, you know, I still need to use on the beta, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, before we talk about beta, two, can you talk about some of the inspirations behind Alkima? Yeah. So basically how uh, it started at the very beginning was we wanted to make a project just messing around, but also like completely just fly in the face of like traditional NFT projects. So what we did off the bat was... We did multi-mints, which was crazy at that time. Uh, we tried to make enough for everyone. Uh, that's something that you know we're working off of a surplus, not a scarcity. I love it. So um, it's very it's interesting to see kind of the different dynamic of having a surplus instead of the scarcity. We're not you know there's definitely times where you have to be like available to get the best cards and things like that. But we work a lot less off of you know only having one of something, um, yep. making it hard to get, things like that. So we want, you know, we want numbers, we want volume, we want as many people in our project as possible. So we mint a ton of our Alchemon so people can play with them. Yeah. So it's kind of like uh, what we talk about to educate the new people, uh, it's like fractional NFTs. So usually yeah. we're used to one of one where it's just one NFT and that's the one thing that's on the market. But we have is, like we say, fractional where you have multiple mints of that same NFT. Exactly. So basically it means that you, um, people call it fractional because they say it's one part of a whole. I think gaming is going to change that idea overall because, you know, it's more like multiple pieces, multiple different versions of something. So right now the main industry just thinks of it as a fraction, but I more think of it as units. So units. there's like units of those of each Alchemon. So it's not like you own one one thousandth of a single Alchemon. You own one of a thousand Alchemon. Makes a lot more sense. Yeah, definitely makes a lot of sense. OK, so let's start going into beta two. Yeah. So beta two is the new uh, version of the game that's out. Like I said, I played it. Each version is it is getting better and better and better. So I can only, like we said, imagine where this is at in ten years. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, we released that and uh, it, we tripled the rewards. Um, right now we're in the beta area. We just want people playing as much as possible. So we tripled the rewards as part of beta two. Um, we also added the special abilities. We call them alk abilities. Yep. Um, so each of the different uh, types, which is you know playing water, fire, the type of the Alchemon has one uh, special attack that you can get in the store. Um, we've also done a lot more on our website. You can now log in with your wallet on the website. You can do all the purchasing on the website and crafting um, with Para Wallet as well because you need Para to play the game. Nice. So now you can almost interact with everything uh, Alchemon just with the Para Wallet, which is really a big step forward to where it was, you know, three yeah, months ago. Exactly. You know, for one, shout out to Para Team because they have upgraded that wallet. Yeah. Um, now we can even see our NFTs in there. So yeah. That, <laughs> last time you was here, that wasn't <laughs> even a possibility. Yeah. Uh, so just, it's great to see those updates. And then what you say with the website, you know, as an entrepreneur, it's uh, dope to be like, okay, you have, it's kind of like collecting your own emails. Now the, uh, the people, don't have to necessarily go to an external place to go get Alkimon or to, to facilitate their gaming. They can go directly to your website. Exactly. If for whatever reason all the marketplaces shut down, we are our own ecosystem at this point, which is a huge plus. Yes. And I love it. Like I always say, uh, I'll be telling people, you know, about the project, but every week my coins come in. And then a lot of times I just go back and reinvest and I'll go buy something from your website with those coins. Yeah. In. So the economy of it is definitely growing. It's amazing. Yeah, it's it's awesome. We're definitely uh, we're 
always walking a tightrope on the economy. It's definitely not the easiest thing, but uh, it's something that we're committed to pull off. Yeah. Okay. So beta two, any more updates on beta two? Um, we also have a leveling system. So now after each battle, uh, your Alchemon gain levels and can level up. They don't gain, they gain experience and experience then can points. level up. Uh, and then with the next release, we will have uh, you be able to evolve your uh, Alchemon in game. So once you get to the proper level, you'll get the option to evolve the Alchemon, which will get a higher rarity. Uh, you trade in your existing one and get the evolved version back for free just from playing the game. Uh oh, that's dope. Yeah. Pay attention, y'all. Pay attention. <laughs> it's happening. Okay, let's start to move forward. Uh, fundraising. So, like I said, I've seen some articles, things are floating around that, you know, money is being raised, and you guys are also going into a, a fundraising, right? Can you talk um, about that? Yeah, we uh, finished our seed raise, um, so of a million dollars, which is really exciting. Um, some Congrats. people, thank you, thank you. Uh, some people wanted to kind of know the specifics of what that has helped us to do. Um, so basically that has helped us to be like legitimate in every way you could think like we are now a uh, BVI, which is uh, British, British Virgin Islands Incorporated. So our, um, our corporation is in BVI, which is important due to, you know, some legal, yep. yeah, legal stuff. That was in the Cayman Islands first name okay yeah yep. yeah so, international cliff <laughs> yeah which that stuff is not cheap and you know so even no matter what the u.s does you know because yep. our our gaming company is in the u.s it doesn't really matter what the u.s does because we're not incorporated in the u.s anymore yep. so things like that that's a long i shouldn't say long it's an expensive legal process so it's allowed us to do things like that um also it's allowed us to pay to um to pay to get all of our smart contracts audited before release so there's a lot. Um, there's a lot of stuff out there. Not everyone has audited smart contracts, Thanks. and this has allowed us to, you know, spend that money without having to raise it from the community. You know, if we didn't have this fundraising, especially through, you know, this kind of down, you know, whatever you want to call it, the bear market. Yeah, crypto we, winter. Yeah, exactly. We yeah. would have raised prices already. Um, we would have, you know, we'd be struggling to pay our employees and things like that. So it's really just allowed us the freedom to just kind of sit back and build, um, which is definitely the best case scenario for us. But otherwise, you know, we'd be spending our time trying to grind out sales, you know, like how yeah. can how can we sell more Alchemon to build the game, which right now we're just like, we're releasing things, you know, specifically on, you know, not like some extreme timeline, but it's like, we're not having to rush out releases of uh, selling things to people to continue development of the game. So we're in a great position that way. Nice. Excellent to hear that. You yeah. Know. Um, can we dive in a little bit more on the smart contract part? Because I always think it's interesting and always looking for that educational component there. Yeah. Um, can you break down what a smart contract is? Yeah. So what a smart contract is, is um, it just is a piece of code that lives on the blockchain. And it's something that people can interact on the blockchain. Um, so it's trustless. Anyone who has the correct input to the smart contract gets the proper output from the smart contract. Uh, trustless, guaranteed, like the smart contract just won't compute, it won't execute if not everything is in line. So it basically means that um, you don't have to trust me when you're buying your Alchemon that the you know atomic transfer or whatever, however else you're buying it mm -hmm. works. It uh, lives on the blockchain and just automatically lives there forever and can be interacted with by anyone who wants to. Excellent breakdown. Yeah. It's some uh, next level technology, you know, cutting out the middleman, relying on the code. And as you said, you then have to go pay some money to get people to see if they can like break it, to see if it's a legit contract with the auditors. Yeah. And then once you get these expensive auditors to go through, Wait, it's all gravy. Yeah, and you get all the feedback, which, you know, it's just going to improve your contracts in the future and stuff like that. It's, it is a great system. It's just really expensive and you need, you know, you know, funding through the public is not a popular thing um, unless you just, you know, strike gold and have a really popular project, you know, trying to, you know, grind out funding from the people to spend what you think you should spend on is not really the best thing to do. So we're very fortunate to be in the position we're in. Yeah, that's dope. Again, congrats. Yeah. And I'll also just bring up that we are we are trying to lean towards, you know, Alchemon started as kind of an NFT project in a game, but we are trying to make it more of a protocol. So like it's everything exists on the blockchain. If if the Alchemon team disappeared, everything would still exist and work. Um, like if like right now, if the marketplace has disappeared, it would still work. So we're trying to build it more into a protocol just to make sure all the pieces can work without, you know, the centralized people there. Obviously, we need to be here for a little bit. Yep. 
Um, and then that just goes into um, governance, which uh, we're still planning to release pretty soon here. And I'm really excited for that to make sure the players, the people who are invested, the people who own Alcacoin, the governance token, can have their say in what we do and what decisions are made. And I'm super excited th for that to get all the heavy decisions off my head and <laughs> let the community, you know, argue, yeah. fight and decide, you know, I'm super excited for that and to see what kind of um, engagement that brings in the Alcamon community. No, it's going to bring a lot of engagement. So I'm in the, I'd be watching it. I don't respond all the time in the discords and all that, yeah. but I'm watching. So the discord popping, you got your, your unofficial telegram. Yep. There's definitely a lot of messages in there. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, governance has a lot of people, you know, involved. Can we, as before we go to borderless a little bit, cause yeah. I, can we talk about some of the numbers in the discord and like what, what some of the numbers of Alchema in terms of users or players and collectors? Yeah, so our favorite metric is uh, how many people are doing wallet staking. So mm. two second breakdown of wallet staking is you have Alcamon in your wallet, you have Alcacoin asset approved in your wallet, and you have what we call a stake flag. So yep. that just shows that you want to earn uh, Alcacoin on a weekly basis, basically opting in to the wallet staking. Um, and so that sends Alcacoin to every person uh, that has all those three things. And uh, on a week basis, we grow about pretty commonly between 50 to 100. Uh, we're up to over 2,700. I think by Saturday, we should be releasing uh, probably, we'll probably be close to 2,800. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's growing up. Yes. It's growing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's definitely that's our favorite metric. Um, you know, we have lots of other great metrics, but that's the one that you know we base off. You know, the health of the people who are actually earning the Alcoin and have done the proper steps to get it. It makes sense. So you got to get an Alcimon. It's in your wallet. Then you have to opt into the stake flag, which means you did uh, a, a few certain act actions that you need to receive your coins. And then I understand that does make a yeah. great metric. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so we're pushing about twenty eight hundred people on that. Okay. Okay. So it's like, again, every time you're getting more upgraded, I know you have advisors, you're working with like borderless capital and I'm sure other people. Yeah. Um, can you talk more about your experience of, you know, going from this startup using the accelerator, uh, how that process is going and, you know, it's helping you develop more. So let's talk about that. Yeah. It's really borderless. All those guys are really awesome. They're, um, they're very, uh, passionate about the space and the scene, um, for Algorand. And, you know, when, we first contacted them or they first contacted us, you know, they were very interested, but they wanted us to go through the accelerator, which we did. And that accelerator again was just an amazing experience. The uh, Miami accelerator with a yeah. uh, rocker. Um, and that was awesome. It just really got our priorities in order. It got all the legal things in order, like stuff that's, you know, you can't just start a project and know these things. It's just no. not how it works. Yeah. Um, so it really got, Oh, and the connections. The connections is definitely the best part. You know, Borderless knows everybody and, you know, they'll connect you up with anyone you need to talk to when you can't just, you know, go and say, hey, I want to talk to the CEO of Humble. How do, how do I do that? You know, so Hitting they... That DM. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that don't work. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, it definitely doesn't work. So um, the connections are also a great thing. Um, so, yeah, having those opportunities um, and that brought us to the point of being able to raise our seed round, uh, which they led. And, yeah, it was... You know, it's a wild experience raising funds, um, but, you know, we pulled it off. Uh, definitely isn't uh, isn't easy. It's definitely a lot of hard work mm -hmm. and persistence and things like that. But uh, we pulled it off. And again, we're very fortunate to have done so. Nice. Excellent. Congratulations. Because yeah, I know a borderless hands are sticky in the, uh, in the Algorand ecosystem. They yeah. A lot of projects in their portfolio, a lot of connections I see for sure. Yeah. 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 They're great. I mean, they, they just really want the space to thrive and um, they are just pushing it forward with a lot of uh, power and backing, which is definitely what the space needs. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. Before we slowly start to close out and talk about what you got next, yep. I, I got some advice to segment. So you say you're building, you know, you're building a startup. Uh, can you give some advice to anyone out there who's like, okay, I'm, I'm creating a pitch deck. I'm, I'm working on trying to get some funding for something that they're building. You got any advice for those people? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> definitely create a pitch deck um, and, uh, you know, just keep refining it. You know, every time you show it to someone, you know, make it better afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, always be upgrading your pitch deck. Have a clear, exact, you know, exactly what it is, exactly what it's supposed to do. 
the effects it'll create, you know, for, you know, not just yourself, but for Algorand, for the ecosystem, because a lot of people are more ecosystem focused than I think people realize, mm -hmm. uh, at least on the people that are fundraising, like they want to see how it's going to grow the whole space. Mm. So um, also things like that, you definitely want to add in there, not just the, you know, not just what is going to help yourself, you know? Yep. Um, and then just start getting in line. You know, one thing about VCs, which I love is they'll talk to anybody, you know, they'll, they'll schedule a call with anyone. You'll have their ear for 20 minutes. Yep. <laughs> um, and you just have to do your best to make sure you have a clear exact vision, um, and exactly what, uh, they may or may not want to see. Not definitely not everyone's going to invest. You know, yep. we got a lot more no's than we got yeses, uh, but that just comes with the territory. Um, but you know, VCs aren't like big, scary guys. They're actually very welcoming to um, having the conversations and, you know, listening to what people want to do in the space, which is really awesome. At least, I don't know about all VCs, but yeah. Algorand VCs, at least. Shout out to the Algo VCs. Yeah, <laughs> so it's really, uh, it's really, you just need to put yourself out there and it's scary and it's not necessarily, at least for me, it's not the most fun thing, but, you know, you just have to put yourself out there and hopefully you have something good enough that garners some interest. Yep. Great advice. Great advice. What I'm hearing, it reminds me of like the, the Napoleon Hill, you know, have a definite a purpose, right? So you know exactly what you're going for. And then you just refine, refresh, get advisors and then keep pushing until you get there. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the space is really um, not very much raising friendly right now, just with the uh, winter, with the bear market, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah. But still, you know, put your ideas out there, keep refining the ideas, uh, practice pitching to friends, um, you know, and again, just have a very clear statement of exactly what it's going to do, have a little statement of how you're going to get there. And then, you know, the main effects and what that helps. And also comparing to what exists on other blockchains, because other blockchains have been around a lot longer. Yep. So also, you know, comparing yourself to what exists on another blockchain can let people kind of research into what effects it's had other places and what it could do for Algorand. So I also think at least on, you know, a um, newer blockchain like Algorand, that also helps a lot. Just, you know, when people try to tell me about something new, I'm like, oh, well, what does it compare to on Ethereum? Just so mm. it helped get the yep. idea. So that's some other advice that I have. Th your market analysis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Okay. Uh, Slowly, let's talk about your next release to give the audience that little alpha from yeah. this video. Yeah, so uh, we plan to release uh, version one um, in probably September, hopefully before the end of September. That's up in the air. Um, but we're going to add, uh, so right now when you download the betas, you have to download each version separately. So in this next one, we're going to have it. So it's the last version that you download. You'll just have upgrades from there. Okay. Yeah, and um, and programming and really making programs and stuff that seems like an easy thing to do, but it's actually not. That's one of the biggest things we've had to tackle is exactly how are we going to have an update system, you know, that communicates with the servers that finds out what's, uh, what version you're on yep. and if you need to download a new one. So that's something we've basically had to create ourselves and everyone has their own solutions on that. There's definitely not like a one size fits all thing for that uh in the gaming space so that's a big one for us we definitely don't want people to have to re-download the game over and over it'll help us fix bugs and do pushes and things like that super easy um, so that's the thing i'm most excited about uh, there's also going to be evolutions in game like i mentioned before yep. so you can evolve your alchemon with enough experience and leveling um and then also we're going to be switching over to the alka gold rewards so we'll have our new token uh, you come in and so it'll kind of be like Alka coin is kind of the out of game uh, currency. currency? Okay. Yeah, so you can buy stuff to use in game. You can buy art pieces that are just art pieces, uh, governance, and then in game you'll win uh, Alka gold, which is more of a reward token. That'll help us kind of you know balance the scales a little bit on supply and demand of the two tokens and the NFTs and things like that. Okay, so then you would still receive Alki coin to your wallet. Exactly. Okay. Cool. You still get weekly. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's part of the out of game. That'll be like the out of game ecosystem where you still get uh, rewards for that, and then in game you'll just earn a different token. And yeah, there's sure. there's a lot more we could go into than that, but I don't think we have time. Uh, but uh, yeah, so you'll, there will be a whole other token added soon, which is pretty exciting. Nice. And then final little question is uh, we're going to get on Apple Store, Google Play, any type of... Yeah, that is the plan. Uh, that's for a little later. That's not in version one, uh, but uh, in version two, which we still plan to do before the end of this year, we plan to um, have uh, player versus player, which Ooh, I'm super pumped wait. about. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's about to be wild. Yeah, exactly. Uh, player versus player and uh, apps. So we don't know. Um, 
we don't know exactly how the Apple one's going to look, sadly, just because they have a lot of rules and stuff for yeah. purchasing and earning. Um, but we do hope to at least have a pared down version that you can play and maybe claim rewards somewhere else. We don't know exactly how we're going to tackle that, but we should be on Android pretty simply uh, before the end of the year. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Well, congratulations. I'm looking forward to it. I know y'all are over here. Uh, any last like closing words or uh, anything you want to mention before I do the outro? Uh, no, I just want to thank all of our uh, current players and invite everyone who's not a current player to come along. Hey, y'all heard it. So make sure y'all go get you some Alcumon and tap in. Again, so we just had Clifford on. A uh, big shout out to Clifford and what he's building. And I'm really excited for the protocol uh, part that you're saying, develop it into something that's, you know, self-sustaining, basically. Yeah. That's amazing. So make sure y'all tap in. Again, always the videos on YouTube first. Leave some comments, like, retweet, share this with the friends and the fam. Go download and uh, support the Algo fam. <laughs> and, of course, uh, the audio version will be out on Spotify and Apple a few weeks after. After. Once again, see Will with the Passive Income Network. I appreciate y'all for tapping in. Thank you, Clifford. And we go. Algorand. Algorand. See the crypto, a digital face. 2021 fee I replaced. Had to have it. Bank account by Algorand. Large amounts. Digital left the physical space. The community had to be great. A digital wallet. Large amounts. It's about fame. Big bank account.